The borrowed materials like stories, songs, videos, pictures, brand names, trademarks, and other used in this material for educational purposes are owned by their respective copyright holders. Credit goes to the original owners. The author does not represent nor claim any ownership over them. A good morning, Grade 7 students! Today, I am very much excited to facilitate our science lesson. But, before we formally begin, let me remind you of the following. First, choose a nice and quiet learning space where you can focus and pay careful attention to our class discussion. Second, participate actively in today's interactive session by encoding or typing your answers in the comment section below. And lastly, number three, I want you to prepare your smartphone, your writing materials, and most importantly, the learning packet that contains your science module. So, the question now is, are you ready to learn? If yes, then let's begin. Our most essential learning competency today expects you to recognize that substances are classified into elements and compounds. Anchored in this most essential learning competency are the following specific learning targets. First, determine the basic information shown in the periodic table of elements. Next, identify elements and compounds in a food label. And lastly, explain the importance of nutrition facts and list of ingredients in a food label. In our previous science lesson, you learned about the general characteristics of elements and compounds. As we talked about, an element cannot be broken down into simpler type of matter by either physical or chemical means. However, a compound is made up of atoms from different elements that are bound together. Therefore, it can be broken down by chemical means. So this time, before we proceed, Let's see what retained in your memory. In the simple activity, I want you to type capital letter E if the statement that I'm going to say characterizes an element. On the other hand, type capital letter C if the statement describes a compound. For each statement, I will give you a few seconds to key in your answers in the comment section. So, let's get it on. So, let me use my phone to check your responses in the comments. Number 1. Water, which is composed of hydrogen and oxygen, is one of its most common examples. So, is it an E or a C? Very good, grade 7. The correct answer is letter C for compound. Let's proceed. Number 2. It is the simplest form of matter and is comprised of only one type of atom. So, is it an E or a C? Nice one, grade 7. Correct answer is letter E for element. What about number 3? It is made up of two or more different atoms that are chemical, chemically combined. Good job! The correct answer is Letter C for compound. Let's proceed to number 4. Some of its known examples are gases like carbon, nitrogen, and helium. Is it an E or E C? Very nice. The correct answer is letter E for element. Let's proceed to the last one. It is organized in what is called as periodic table. Is it an E or E C?
Good job! So the correct answer is letter E for element. Good job, grade 7! Seems like you really understood the fundamental concepts of elements and compounds. At this moment, we will deepen your understanding about the importance of knowing these elements and compounds through an interactive discussion. So, sit still and together, let's enjoy learning. Elements are unique. Thus, we can say that they are arranged in an informative manner in the periodic table. Elements have been grouped in such a way that they somehow possess similar characteristics or properties. Here is an example of the periodic table of elements. From the past lesson, we knew that there are over 100 known elements that can be seen in the periodic table. To be specific, there are 118, some of which are frequently encountered by humans like oxygen, carbon, gold, copper, and silver. Now, if you're going to look closely and carefully in each tile or box in the periodic table, you will actually be surprised to see that there are pieces of information that are written inside. As mentioned in our previous learning unit, some basic details about the elements that can be observed in the periodic table include the following. First, the atomic number which is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. Next is the element symbol, which is an abbreviation used to represent an element. Next is the element name, which is the term that may indicate their element group. And lastly is the atomic mass, which is the quantity of matter contained in an atom of an element. Now, just to reiterate, there are no compounds in the periodic table. Everything that you will see and observe on it are all elements. However, the periodic table helps us to identify the constituent elements of a certain compound. We can use it as a reference in determining the composition of compounds present in commercialized products that are available in groceries and stores. Now, why do you think that it is important to know what elements and compounds are contained in the products that we buy, especially the foods that we consume? Do you have any idea? Actually, that is the mystery question that we are about to discover in the next part of our interactive discussion. Now, to find the answer in that mystery question, I want you to examine these pictures. Tell me how they differ from one another. I will give you a few moments to enter your answers and responses in the comment section. Please feel free to share your insights. Time's up, so let me read some of your responses. So let me choose a student from Marinta National High School. She said, both of them are food products, but the picture on the left is properly labeled. Very good. Let's see another one. A student from Lawang Bato National High School. He said, the picture on the left are foods in the proper packaging, while the picture on the right are foods in bare containers. Nice observation. Let me choose the last one. A student from Valenzuela National High School. So she said, the picture on the left shows foods that have product labels, while the picture on the right does not have any readable contents in the packages and containers. Very nice observation. Thank you for your responses, Read 7 students. Take note 
that in order for us to know the description and contents of a food product, manufacturers add what we call as product labels. Product labels have nutrition facts which contain a list of nutrients found in the foods. They have a corresponding percentage share on the daily recommended dietary allowance. On the other hand, ingredients give the consumers the list of materials that have been added to the product just to ensure that the necessary nutrients can be obtained from it. You know what? It is essential to know that the ingredients added to make a food product are safe to eat in terms of quality and quantity. By quality, these ingredients must be labeled as food grade. An edible product becomes food grade once it undergoes through a strict and standard process and meets cer certain safety guidelines. It is only after that that a substance may be safely added as a food ingredient. Now take note, if it is a non-food grade substance, then it should not be added to products that are meant to be ingested or be eaten. Here is an example. So, did you know that a food grade potassium sorbate is used as an ingredient in making soy sauce? You heard it right. However, a non-food grade potassium sorbate is used as a material in making lotion that we apply on our skin. Another example is citric acid. So, a food grade citric acid is commonly found in juices and candies. But, a non-food grade citric acid is also an ingredient for disinfectants and other household cleaning products. Interesting to know, right? Now, let us try to examine a food label that contains nutrition facts and list of ingredients. First, focus on the nutrition facts. I want you to identify the elements that are found in this food product as indicated in the nutrition facts. Again, you may use the comment section to key in your responses. Okay, let me now read some of your answers. So, as seen in the comment section, most of you answered sodium. So you're right. It is actually symbolized using capital N and the lowercase a. Another answer is calcium. Very good. So calcium is symbolized as capital letter C and lowercase a. Another one. Iron is also correct. So, iron has an element symbol of capital F and lowercase e. And let's use the last one. Last is potassium. Very good. So, it's symbolized as capital letter K. So, very good thoughts and insights being seven. This time, look once again in the nutrition facts. And kindly identify the compounds present in this product. So, key in your answers again in the comment section. Okay, so upon checking your answers in the comment section, these are the answers that you have entered. So most of you entered fat. That's correct. So fat actually is composed of three essential elements known as carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The same with, okay, you also answered cholesterol. Very good. So cholesterol, just like fat, is comprised or composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Another one. 
Okay, very good. Carbohydrate. So, carbohydrate is also composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, fat, cholesterol, and um, carbohydrate just differ from the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. Okay? So, let's see the last one. You're also correct. Okay? Some have indicated protein. That's nice one. So, pro protein has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and an additional element of nitrogen. So, very good, grade 7. Now, let's continue. This time, I want you to look at the ingredients. Okay? So, I want you to determine and identify the elements that are found in the food product as indicated in the ingredients. Let me repeat. Find the elements. So, can you look closely and read thoroughly and tell me if there are elements in the ingredients? Okay, so did you see any element listed here? Well, upon checking your answers, you're right. There are no elements present in the given example. Though, let me tell you that there are several compounds and minerals on the list. So, for the last question, I want you to find and name some compounds in the list of ingredients. Okay, so let me give you a few moments to enter your answers. Okay, time's up. So let me read some of your responses from the comment section. Okay, so you entered water. Very good. So that's right. As we all know, water has constituent elements of hydrogen and oxygen. Another answer right here is sugar. So sugar has constituent elements of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the same is to starch okay so same composition as the aforementioned okay so very good grade seven after having a knowledge about these elements and compounds in a food label let me ask you now why is it important to look and examine the food labels specifically the nutrition facts and list of ingredients before we buy and even eat a food product enter your responses in the comment section Okay, so time's up, read 7. So let me read and choose some responses. Okay, so a student from Mapulang Lupa National High School. So she said, ma'am, because it is for our own safety as consumers and buyers. So that's a good thought. What about another one? From Dalandana National High School. So he said, if you do not read the elements and compounds in a food label, then your health might be compromised. That's a very good thought. Okay? And last one. From Lihuna National High School. So the student here said, It is important because there are possible dangers waiting for those who are not careful in choosing safe and healthy products. We can only know what's safe to eat when we know what elements and compounds are good for our body. 
That's an impressive answer. So, awesome ideas, Grade 7. Thank you for your responses. As we conclude, remember that a food label is a legal requirement. And it is highly important for so many reasons. It helps consumers like us to make informed choices about the foods that we buy. And for our health and safety, we must carefully examine the elements and compounds in the ingredients and other nutritional components of food labels. I hope everything is clear now. To give you more substantial information about our lesson, your respective science teachers will provide additional insights during the follow-up session. Thus, I encourage everyone to study and answer your science learning module from pages 19 to 23. At this moment, I will entertain questions from you. If you have any inquiries or clarifications or other related questions uh, about our topic, then please feel free to ask them using the comment section. Okay, so here is a question from a student from Polo National High School. So the question is, Ma'am, do all food products contain elements and compounds? Well, actually, yes. The most common ones are sodium, iron, um, potassium, and calcium. Now, but remember that uh, not all of the elements and compounds in the food are safe to be eaten. So that is why we should be wise in choosing which food items uh, are we supposed to buy in groceries and store. So let me choose another question. Um, question from a student from Malanbay National High School. So the question is, how do we know if the elements and compounds in the products that we buy are safe to eat? So, well, for as long as these elements and compounds are uh, proven to be edible by humans, like for example, iron, calcium, or compounds like water, salt, and sugar, then they are safe eaten or to be fed. But remember that um, everything must be um, eaten or ingested in right amount and in right proportion. So as they say, um, everything in excess is not so good or bad for our health. Right? So let me choose last question. So from Vente Arialis National High School, the question is, can we be poisoned by some elements and compounds present in the food products? That's a very interesting question. So actually, yes, there are elements and compounds that are or that become highly reactive and highly toxic once they spoil or decay. So this leads us to be keen observers, uh, not only in the nutrition facts and the list of ingredients in cells, but most importantly in the expiration. It's okay. Bye. So I guess that would be that would be all. So I want to thank everyone for being cooperative and particip participative in our session. So have a good day, everyone, and stay.